Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, tonight it's supposed to be clear all night, so fingers crossed. Um, the moon is incredibly bright. It's a 98.9% .9 moon, so some people would say, no, I'm not going to um, image on a, on a bright moon like that. But, um, you know, when nights are limited, you'll take anything. So I'm going to be imaging, uh, hopefully, as far away from the moon as I can. Um, I've got a target that I had done Oh, a while ago and I never finished it so uh, it's the just near the large magnetic cloud NGC 2018 I'll, I'll see how you know bright things are around there when I start to image and the other area I'm doing is a, a little part just on the edge of Carina um, which looked a bit interesting so I've done a about a night on that already and um, doing a bit more tonight See how it goes with the uh, with the weather and the um, and the moon. Now I have to kickstart or push the roof just to get it started um, because I made a bit of a mistake by um, leaving these things attached. Uh, where are we? To the roof over there. And uh, what happened was the. Um, the motor started moving and uh, the roof couldn't move and so in the end I ended up wearing away just the first two little um, bits in, in the track here. Um, you can see these little teeth so the first two are a bit worn away so I have to give it just a push start to get past those two so we'll do that now. Okay, I've got Nina all set up. I've got my two targets, NGC 2018, and then this target here, I'm just calling Edge of Karina. I, d I don't know if it's got a name. Well, there'll be a name of some things around there. I think there's a few star clusters, so, um, but it's just what I've called it in the meantime. Um, I'm gonna do this target, which I'd forgotten about. As you can see, the um, it's sort of on its way down by the time I start imaging, but because it's the large measurement cloud, it's you know visible for most of the year for us. So I've got uh, plenty of time here. I'm just going to do HA and some 10 minute subs because it's so bright. I've got some S2 to have a go at if there's enough time, but I'm going to do four hours. That should actually um, tip me over to move into the next target. And I've got it to finish at 1.30 a.m. Um, and then it is going to move on to this other target here. Um, you can see where the moon is, um, and it's pretty bright, so uh, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Um, and what am I doing? Again, pretty much just HA um, until uh, 5.28, so I've got it to go to Astronomical Dawn. I uh, don't want to really want to go any later because it really does start to get light uh, around this time. So um, we will see how it goes at the moment. Where are we if I just click on the imaging? So it's run through all these um, bits and pieces beforehand, making sure that it's cooled down, the roof's rolled off, um, the mount's unpacked and everything. And I've just got it to, to wait till 2140, which is astronomical dusk. So. Um, it's now 9.30, so in 10 minutes it should kick off, I hope. Okay, so I'm in Pixon site. Now I've actually got three images to show you. I've got NGC 2018 from the Large Magellanic Cloud. I've got that um, area of nebulosity near Carina. And while I was actually collecting data for this um, with the Skywatcher, I was also collecting some data on an area of nebulosity um, with the Red Cat 51 and the ASI 533. So I'll show you that um, image as well. Now, what I've got here is the stacks for the different filters and the final image. I'm not going to go through the processing because, you know, there's three images to go through. So look, we'll start with NGC 2018 in the Large Magellanic Cloud. And what I'm going to do is bring up um, uh, Nina here. Uh, if we have a quick look at the offline sky map in Nina, we've got the LMC here and we've got the Tarantula Nebula there. And where I was imaging was out here. Um, not often imaged because the Tarantula Nebula gets most of the attention. 
Um, and this is NGC 2018 here, but there were other areas of nebulosity associated with it and I wanted to capture that as well. So this was basically my framing. Now, if we pull up the um, hydrogen alpha, uh, this is what it looked like here. Um, a reasonable amount of detail in uh, NGC 2018, but these other areas of nebulosity were pretty faint, particularly when you get um, out towards the edges here. And, you know, there are complete circular areas of nebula here, which took a bit of um, time to um, bring out in the final image. This is the S2, which was quite faint. Um, and uh, this was the O3, which was a lot brighter. So we had, if I get my um, info here, the HA was six hours, the O3 was just under five hours, and the S2 was five hours and 40 minutes. So the total was 16 hours and 15 minutes. And through use of a lot of masks, etc., cetera, um, and doing a SHO type image, uh, this was the final image here. So. NGC 2018 here, um, you know, plenty of detail here because it was the brightest. And I just wanted to get these um, areas to show up, which are quite faint. And uh, as I said, it took a bit of time to get there. Um, I think this could probably do with a lot more time on it. I mean, I'm reasonably happy with the result, but I think maybe it could do a bit better if I um, got at least double the time on it, since there are areas that are very faint here and maybe from darker skies than here at home. But um, you know, reasonably happy with the result on, on that one. Okay, so we'll move on to the second one. And this was um, what I think of as the suburbs of the Carina Nebula. Now, um, I'll bring up Nina's offline sky map again. Here we've got Carina Nebula here, which, you know, is commonly imaged, um, one of the jewels of the Southern Hemisphere. But um, what often doesn't get imaged is this area down here. And this is what I was looking at thinking, oh, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, it looks like a nice little sort of wall of perhaps HA. But then as I looked at it a bit more, it seemed to look a bit like a face, almost like a witch's face with a big sticking out chin, pointy nose, mouth, eye here. So I framed it up and uh, sort of basically had it in this orientation. Now, um, I'll show you the, this was the O3. Um, so there was a reasonable amount of O3 in here. Uh, Orientated once I was, you know, taking the images, sort of looking like the faces here, looking down towards Karina. Um, this was the, I think the HA, again, quite a lot more detail. And this was the S2, which also had a reasonable amount of detail, but, you know, the stars are very prominent and that's something you also have to deal with. A little bit of dark nebula here as well. Now, when I combine them as an SHO, um, I got this. Now, this has not had any real sort of processing other than the fact that uh, I've, I think I did a bit of denoise just for the video and I also removed the stars. But what I noticed here was that the sort of the HA and the S2 were um, bringing out these more sort of yellow and orangey areas and there was a sort of halo almost around the face of O3. So we've got the sort of pointy chin, the nose, got a mouth here, there's an eye around here somewhere. And there are other little twists and turns of, of sort of nebulosity in here, which also looked uh, quite cool. I think there's some up here as well, these areas like this. So, um, and although the final version looks a lot more colorful, um, I, I did want to sort of try and define all these little different areas. And the best way to do that is by having some sort of variation in color. So you can see there is a bit of variation. There's a sort of a bit of turquoise here. I kept a little bit of the green. Um, there's blues, there's yellows, there's some orange here. So in the end, the final version, which some people may, um, you know, consider it to be a little bit too colorful for their taste, but um, was this. And as I said, looks like the face sort of staring down at Karina. But I really like the way um, the face seemed to have this sort of aura of, of O3 around it. Um, and as I said in, earlier, there's also these other little uh, interesting little bits in the, in the nebula too. And, and I think having the colors more defined um, uh, does really bring out some of those extra features here. I looked at it this way and uh, then I just basically flipped the image the way it was with the uh, Meridian Flip and I actually kind of preferred the way it looked, even though the other way looks more like a face. I, I did sort of prefer overall the way it looked. So this is how I actually presented it when I um, posted up on Astro Bin. But um, 
yeah, this is an area that doesn't get a lot of uh, love, I think, because of the Carina Nebula next door. Now, this does actually have a name, um, which I found out uh, while I was actually imaging it, and it's RCW53C, not the most inspiring name, but um, I kind of like to think of it as the, the Witch of Carina. Um, right, let's move on to the third one. So back to the um, offline sky map in uh, Nina. And we've got this area of um, hydrogen alpha here, which kind of look quite interesting. And uh, it's quite a big structure. And it's kind of a little hard to tell exactly where LBN1077 finishes and starts. Um, in sort of this offline sky map, it seems to show it as being the whole object. Um, I think seen on some other areas where it's part of this, this whole area, there's a smaller part, so I'm not 100% sure. The other name it goes by is SH2-312. Now, um, you can see the framing here is with the red cat, although it's 240 millimeter um, focal length, I am using the ASI533, which is only uh, 3008 by 3008 um, pixels. So it actually only picks up a very small area of this. So I'd have to do quite a big mosaic if I wanted to collect the whole thing. So in the end, I just decided, well, you know, why not just go for the pointy end? Um, now for this one, I did, uh, let me just bring up the hydrogen alpha, which had most of the information. So this was sort of the, the that pointy end that I was talking about. There were also some other HA in the background here, but I kind of quite liked the, the detail that was in here. This was um, 8 hours and 20 minutes. Um, now, I did do some O3, but um, I decided not to use it in the end, and it's not going to show up here on YouTube, but there is a, a little bit of O3 showing up, but it looked like I was going to have to spend a ton of time on this and probably with little gain, so um, I didn't bother carrying on with that. This was the red filter, which had um, quite a bit more um, information. It's probably the most detail in there out of the um, RGB filters. This was only two and a half hours. Um, but again, I'm in a sort of a darker sky bottle, sort of two to three. Um, this was the green, which very faintly has uh, some of the nebula in it, but again, um, probably hard to see. And this is the blue, we um, I'm sure you can actually see there is some, some signal being picked up there. Now, what I ended up doing was using pixel math. Um, I just applied the HA um, to the red channel, which kind of basically look pretty much like just the, if I bring this up, just the HA channel. But anyway, um, that's that's what I did and then combined them as an HA RGB image. And uh, I also took an H, I took the HA and did a luminance, created a luminance off that. And I think seeing this starless, you can really see the sort of um, wavy detail in here. It kind of looks like a very, smooth sort of silk um, fabric or whatever, or maybe smoke. Um, and uh, this was my final image here. And I just changed the orientation, just flipped it 90 degrees because I kind of quite liked that orientation. And um, yeah, simple, but um, I, I thought quite a, an appealing image myself and, um, and some nice star colors in there as well. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, those were my three images. And um, I think probably my favorite was the Witch of Karina. I mean, fortunately, there's no such thing as witches, so we don't have to worry about that sort of thing. Um, but look, uh, until the next video, I hope everybody's getting lots and lots of clear skies. Thank you.